And so, you know, myself as a, as a parent of young children that are less than 18 years old, I, I'm concerned that something happens to me that, you know, someone's there to take over their care. Sure. And this is an important thing because if something were to happen to their parents, they're going to be going through some significant trauma. And so you would expect your family to come and be their support system, take care of them, get them through that tough time. But if you don't have your guardianship set up in your estate plan, it opens the door for those people that are going to be their support plan to become enemies of each other and create this frightened possible court battle on who's going to be the one that takes care of the kids. Welcome you to another episode of The Power of Jim. And through life, many, many things happen. And so we love, love, love the guests that we have today. As a matter of fact, this is his third time to be able to initiate the trifecta of what's happening in life to really help you. And so I have my incredible co host of The Power of Jim show, Mr. Jim Meyer. Jim Meyer. Jim G. Chong, the rock star, thank you very much. And yes, uh, we are working with uh, Jim Felipe, who is a uh, Hall of Famer uh, for our, our show. And uh, he will be getting a trophy in the mail just for mm-hmm. showing up three times, uh, which we appreciate that. And uh, the big thing is that his name is Jim, and That's our right. new rule will be. Where do I mail, mail this to? <laughs> anyway, hey, everyone needs one of these these days. Look, Jim, this one I sure. <laughs> Jim, I don't need to see your new bikini. All right, so <laughs> Jim Felipe, thank you for coming on our show. Jim is a local attorney. He's one of the attorneys who is approachable, and he does not have one of those "I told you so, I know, I know it all" attitudes. You can go and get a free consult with him over Zoom or maybe a phone call or maybe uh, are, is it legal? Did Gavin Newsom tell you that you cannot meet with people in person anymore, Jim? Uh, no, we are an essential service, so we are actually able to meet people in person. That's wonderful. So suing the pants off of someone should always be essential. That's what I've always said. So, the, uh, so as we move on, uh, Jim T. Chong, what do you had a very important question for our guest? What was you know, it? the whole thing is, is that in preparing for everything, you know, um, you know, again, uh, Mr. Meyer, we were just talking about the deal that you have on the table, especially in this climate, you want people to understand what they are doing to get it done. And so I know um, uh, Jim Meyer has been closing a deal. You know, I've been helping people in the financial arena also, and just helping them get their message, their story out as well through media. So I deal with media money. But the whole thing is, is that you can build your empire and see it all go away if you don't have things properly planned for your family. And I know we did talk about estate planning before and, you know, just it's very important to have the essential things in place. So, you know, what happens in the event that uh, that you you actually um, leave this earth, you want to make sure things are as you have planned out. But today we're talking about guardianship and guardianship with minors is not something people naturally think about or is it, but uh Mr. Felipe, can you tell us why this whole issue of guardianship is so important? So when I sit down with a client, we talk about a a litany of of subjects when it comes to building a comprehensive estate plan. And one of the most important topics, at least for me, is making sure that someone's minor children are taken care of and something, God forbid, were to happen to them. And so like, uh, you know, like everything else, you want to make sure all your affairs are in order, but your kids usually, at least for me, and I would assume those for, for everyone else that's a parent, are probably one of the most important things in your life. And so if something were, God forbid, to happen to you, your kids are going to go through that trauma of losing their parents, mm. and they're going to need a support system. Typically, your family's the one that steps in and becomes that support system that pulls them through that very dark, terrible time. And if you don't have guardianship already set up in your estate plan, at least open the door for that support system to now fight with each other to become the next guardian. And so by taking that whole thing off the table, well, there's no fight that's going to happen. 
it allows the support system to support the child. And ultimately, they're not going to get that double hit of also losing their losing their parents and also losing their support system. They're going to have that support system to carry them through that that bad time. And oh, really, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Continue. Oh yeah, I was going to say really and truly in your last minutes, you you definitely want to look and say, you know, my kids are going to be taken care of, you know, even though I'm going to be passing on. Yeah. Okay. So let's say I have a brother and sister my age, right? My my parents. Um, my, my mom's passed away. My, my dad is, is right now in, in a memory care location. Um, and let's say um, I have two children that are minors, all right? And I have brothers and sisters. That are, they're more than able to take care of them, okay? Um, and then something happens to myself and the mother, all right? So let's say they're 11 years old, you know? Could my brother or sister just come in and say, hey, you know, these are, this is part family. I'll go ahead and just uh, take custody and help help them. Uh, what what happens in, in, in the event that? Because, you know, we have family. We don't, we don't need to necessarily set up guardianship, right? Well, not necessarily. So, I mean, obviously, like from the human aspect of it, you're not going to let the kids sit in some house by themselves after the passing of their parents and wait for a court to tell you that it's okay to take care of the kids. So, obviously, from a human aspect – they're going to be there to, you know, take care of their well-being. What we talk about when it comes to guardianship is the legal aspect. So, you know, being able to sign documents, you know, uh, enroll them in school and act as if they were the parent, you have to have that legal process taken care of and getting the guardianship established so that there's no concerns with whether or not you have the legal authority to, you know, take care of, of their needs. Uh, and that goes from everything from school to medical to, you know, pretty much anything thing else in their life. You need to have that legal authority to act on you know, in their best interest. So um, without, without like that, that this thing in place, right, what sort of things can happen that would be devastating to the child? Great question. So, you know, obviously anytime you have a guardianship, it's going to be a court process. And while no court process is always, you know, easy and fun. We try to limit the amount of uh, possibilities that it, someone contests it. And so if you have it established in your state plan documents, you know, that succession of who is going to serve in that guardianship role, it makes it real easy for the court to make that decision on who's going to be appointed into that role. And it eliminates the potential that someone's going to contest it unless there's something more there. And it's not a, you know, 100% guarantee that's how it's going to happen, but it, it limits the possibility of a contest. And that's what you're really trying to do in any type of legal document is limit the possibility of a, of a court battle. Yeah. So about how long does it take to set all of this up? So as far as, it depends on what you do. If we're setting up a, a full comprehensive estate plan, you know, it takes a few weeks to get all of the information we need gathered and, and put together. And there is a process that happens, but it's usually, you know, two to three weeks, depending on how fast we were able to get that information from a client. If you're strictly looking for setting up guardianship, it's, a, it's obviously a simpler because it's only one piece of that whole process. So we can get that set up fairly quickly. Um, but, you know, again, it's, it's all in the planning. And mm -hmm. that's kind of the key to all of this is, is an estate plan is more than just setting up a trust or a will or having an advanced health care directive put together. Uh, it's also about making sure that, you know, your kids are taken care of uh, on a guardianship level. So uh, now I've got two kids that are both over 18 now, and then we had something in place years ago. Um, it, but uh, you know, I've got other kids always popping up uh, claiming to, to be my, my children. So let's just say the DNA test uh, shows positive. And I find out I've got an eight-year-old kid and baby's mama and I go to you and we wanted to iron something out, but we can't agree on what to do. I, what if the parents don't agree? How do, how do you work that out? So it really depends on who's going to have custodial custody of, of the child. And that really is how it affects. Both parents can set up in their estate plan their desired guardianship succession. And depending on how the events end up being, if, if one were to precede the other, uh, it's usually the, the last remaining parent that's going to um, have the ultimate say. But again, the court is going to look at the totality of circumstances. 
And so if, you know, in, in your estate plan, you've designated the care of the child to someone that's, you know, doing things that are not so great for the care of children. Um, the court's going to take that into consideration and also take into consideration what the other uh, parent had placed in their documents. And ultimately, they're going to make the best decision in, in their opinion that's best for the child. So like I said, it's never a guaranteed 100% that it's going to be exactly how you have it set up. If there's a reason where, you know, certain things have happened, you know, say that the person you designate in your plan, you know, turns out to be a convicted, you know, child molester or something along those lines, you know, obviously we, we would want the court to kind of ignore your instructions and, um, you know, have the care of the children passed on to someone's probably more suited for that. And so that's really, it, it all goes back to what's reasonable and, and based on the, what we call in the legal profession, the totality of circumstances, which just means we're looking at the entire picture, not just narrowly focused on one, one thing. Yeah. Well, sometimes in, in life, life happens, something triggers people <clears throat> to think about, uh, you know, just making sure their children are taken care of, you know, um, and a, a question, wouldn't a natural progression be, hey, I just had a child that was born, bam, I should make sure that this is taken care of. Is that something that usually is put in place in some, some people's minds or do people wait for a certain age or how does this work? You know, unfortunately, there is such a limited amount of education in this area that a lot of the time people don't actually get these documents taken care of until they run into a show like this or a person sure. who discusses that. Yeah. There's no, you know, I'm a parent, you know, I have three, three kids myself. I don't ever remember anybody handing me a document or a book or anything that said, hey, you need to get your guardianship set up. In fact, it wasn't until law school that I realized the importance of it and had it taken care of. <clears throat> and again, I mean, I got that through an educational source. And so part of what I see my job as an attorney is being an educator to as many people that are willing to listen to me talk. And part of that is get your guardianship set up as soon as you know that you're going to be a parent, because you never know what's going to happen to you at any time. Tomorrow's never a guarantee. So, you know, getting it set up and planning before anything terrible happens to you, make sure that your kids are ultimately going to yeah. And, you know, I know we have your link here, um, philippilaw.com. And um, you're going to want to take a look at the link because it's it can be tricky. Is it two L's? Is it two P's? Well, it's one L and two P's. So, but uh, Philippi Law. <laughs> but, so, so do go ahead, you write a blog? So if people uh, get a hold of you and they keep in touch with you, uh, even if, if you're not on our show, people can probably learn something new from you. What once a week, once a month? How often do you you share your your brilliance with the world? <laughs> so I I've attended the Power of Gym show now three times. So as many times as I could get on here to educate your your viewers. But no, all joking aside, um, I have a pretty active blog. Uh, it's usually uh, once a week. Sometimes if you know how life turns sometimes it's every other week depending on on how that turns out but um it's been pretty consistent at least once a week and um, i try to make sure that it's relevant content that it's written in a way that you don't have to have a, a law degree to understand it uh, because us lawyers love to prove how smart we are and the big words that we paid a whole lot of money to go through law school to learn yeah um and you know it's written in a way that i still consider myself a normal person and with a normal level of intelligence. And um, I remember what it was like before having gone through the law school experience to not understand all these big fancy legal words. And so I take a really big step in making sure that what I put out, not only verbally, but also in a written form is, is understandable to everyone so that you get the maximum value of what I'm trying to convey. Yeah, really? well, it's, this is really an important topic, especially for new and emerging kids. And, you know, with, uh, with these things in place, you can really um, make sure if you're a parent that your, your wishes are carried out. And I can tell you my, my uh, assumption is this could save a lot of heartache on the family to try to decide who takes care of who. And, you know, people could be fighting to help and want to maintain the child. And then there's also the whole thing dealing with the will. Is it just assumed that when people establish a will, maybe establish a trust or an estate plan that 
this whole concept of guardianship goes along with it to be set up? Is that assumed? It depends on who you're working with. And so like any professional, you have varying degrees of, of, of capabilities and that's mm -hmm. the, the most politically correct way I can say it. If you're trying to find the cheapest, quickest, easiest way, um, there are other opportunities to have that done. And usually it's not gonna be as comprehensive. It most likely won't address issues like this. Uh, sitting down with someone that's such as myself that's really gonna truly listen to, to what you, uh, what you want and also eliciting things you probably didn't even think of so that we can address it and truly make it a fully customized comprehensive plan that addresses all the possibilities that can happen. Well, I shouldn't say all because there's nothing that's that has ever been written that's fully comprehensive, but as comprehensive right. as, as we can make it to make sure that all uh, reasonably um, foreseeable issues are taken care of. Yeah. And you know what, if you're a kid watching this show and what kid doesn't watch this show <laughs> and you're thinking, right. hey, mom and dad, they could, uh, something horrible could happen. Give some advice to mom and dad and let them know that, that uh, you want to go with the, the aunt and uncle that have the, the PlayStation and those uh, cool gaming chairs. Uh, you know, put your two cents in. So when you meet with these uh, clients, is it the mother and the father that meet you together? Do they bring the kids in? How does it work? So that's a fantastic question. And, and honestly, this is one of those things that if you have children that are, that have gotten to the age that have formed opinions, I have teenagers now, so um, there's no secret what their opinions are on pretty much everything. <laughs> right. Um, Parents it, understand that. Yeah. So, I mean, as far as that's concerned, it's not a bad thing to get their input, but obviously you're the parent you know best. As far as who's there, you know, ultimately there's some confidentiality issues when you have uh, multiple parties in a consultation like that. And really and truly the kids are, are not going to understand what's going on, probably not the best environment for them. Uh, I really kind of empower my clients to go home and have a conversation amongst themselves and to also discuss those issues with, with their kids. And that's, you know, most parents come into my office already having kind of figured out what they want to do with that. But if there's ever any question on like how, you know, how to handle this, that's the advice I usually give is, you know, talk it out. This is a process. This isn't one of those things where you're walking into Walmart and grabbing the cheapest, you know, roll of toilet paper and didn't <laughs> check out. Right. You're assuming that our Walmart has toilet paper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And you're assuming it's inexpensive, especially during these times. But anyway, moving forward. So, uh, so Jim, here's a question. Uh, so, so if somebody wants to get to meet with you, do you give them like a list of the different categories that you're going to discuss so that they can kind of get on the same page before they meet you? Or how does that work? So we leave it fully open for our, that conversation. I start off my consultations by addressing any questions that they have. Typically, if you've engaged us at some different level, you've already come into it with some questions, not really understanding what it is. Probably someone suggested that you come talk to an attorney. And so I like to just initially attack those. And then I go through exactly what a comprehensive estate plan is. And that whole process starts eliciting those questions. And then after that consultation, we give a, a questionnaire for you to complete. And it's pretty extensive. And that elicits more conversations. So like I said, when it's a process, it doesn't all get hammered out in an hour consultation. It's a process between that and the questionnaire and the conversations that we have through that process. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and then again, I get back with, together with people during a design meeting when we go over what I've drafted already. to get more input and to make sure that we're all on the same page as far as what their, their wishes were. Yeah. And is this pretty expensive? No, I mean, if you're comparing it to what you would pay if you didn't have a plan, you know, I, I don't know, there is a, a blog that I did on this, you know, a $500,000 estate in California is probably pretty common, considering that if you own a house, your house is probably going to take up as much of that, if not more. And so if you're looking at going into death without a will, you're going to end up in probate court. And you're going to pay somewhere between twenty and thirty thousand dollars to administer your estate. When wow. talking about having your estate plan taken care of, you're going to probably pay about you know ten to fifteen, maybe twenty percent, depending on the complexity of it, of that amount. So I mean, you're, it's a fraction of what you would pay if you don't have it set up. And the reality of it is, your your estate's going to pay for it one way or another. You know, we might as well do it soon 
sue now, pay the lesser fee, and actually have a voice in how things are taken care of. If you fail to plan, you plan, plan to fail. To fail. Yes. And you know, this whole this whole aspect, just the whole mindset of planning is so very important. And you know, the, the when people are doing this, you might want to check into your state plan. So we cannot assume what I what I understand, uh, Mr. Felipe, is that we cannot assume that because you have an estate plan, guardianship is taken care of if you do have younger children or minor children, correct? Right. You and that's a good point. Uh-huh. It's a fantastic idea. And I always suggest people to monitor their estate plan. It's not one of those, you know, Ronco uh, set and forget it ideas. You establish your plan, you have to manage it and make sure that it's still uh, legally relevant and also relevant to the changes in your life. And so what we do as part of our process is stay in touch with our clients. And every year uh, we elicit some conversations in making sure that the estate plan is up to date. But also people that have gotten their estate plans established from other sources yeah, I have a lot of clients coming here with their plan. They think that it's written or does one thing and it actually does a complete other or it doesn't mm-hmm. even address a situation like guardianship. So we're more than happy to review those plans and let you know uh, where you stand and if you need to have some changes. Made. Yeah. So you're not recommending using legal zoom. Um, I don't want to speak anything negatively about another company, but, uh, and they're a legal company, Jim Meyer, you should know better than to ask a lawyer (laughs) about a legal company. We'll have a, uh, cease and desist order. (laughs) Right. Yeah. You know, every company has its, its role in the world. I have a role and they have a role and I think, you know, together we can coexist. I offer a service that's similar to theirs, but I think it's more comprehensive. Yeah. And, um, you know, everyone has, you know, it's just like comparing, you know, Neiman Marcus to, you know, a, a, a right. So, yeah, you know, I feel, you know, there's a, there's a place for all of us here. Yeah. You know, um, you know, and you know, you know, the whole thing is like, just because we have a phone, we're all photographers now, right? We're all professional photographers. There are right. downsides. There is a lot you can do yourself, even if you're right, but Really, that's why, uh, you know, we have lawyers with the designations that can truly help you. And so as you're thinking about your life, your plan, one of the most important things that you can safeguard is we talk about the value of the assets, the physical value is your home. But, you know, what about your children? A very important um, uh, subject matter to discuss the whole guardianship of children. So I know that, um, you know, there are a lot of different uh, things that we could be thinking about right now. What keeps us from thinking about guardianship for children? I, I know it's interesting because you brought it up and I thought, wow, I didn't really think of that or have that in place myself. But uh, what what should uh, prompt people to be really uh, thinking about that? Of course, you watch shows like this. Um, what are some of the triggers that we can give people to make sure they do make sure this is taken care of? You know, the, the reality of it is is, is kind of, educating people as often and, and as much as you possibly can. And, you know, you asked a question earlier is, you know, how soon should they get it? I would say as soon as you, be, you know, get word that you're a parent, because, you know, God forbid, we've heard all these stories where the child's not even born yet. Something terrible has happened to you and, but the child survives and mm-hmm. if you didn't have anything in place, um, you know, then it's back to square one and, and yes. having that contest. So, you know, that's one of those things where, you know, it's like I said, it's part of my job to get the education out there. I can't force people to listen to me. Um, but, you know, I, I strongly encourage people to investigate these issues. And if you have any questions, we're always available to help people out and make sure they're all set up properly. So we're actually investigating a way to force people to watch the Power of Gym show. And uh, if we can make it a legal obligation, uh, that's we right. Do it. I mean, I think, uh, James Orwell put together a book uh, a long time ago titled 1984. I mean, there might be a few chapters in there that's relevant on that. Yeah, it's time oh, to wow. reread that book. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Jim, okay, how do they get a hold of you? What's your phone number? So, they can. we have two phone numbers. We serve both the Fairfield, Solano County area. Uh, the phone number there is 707 584 6739. Uh, we also serve the Sacramento area through our Rockland office. The phone number there is at 916-333-7910. Uh, 
And you can always go to our, our website. All of our contact information is there. It's uh, philippilaw.com. And uh, again, there's a lot of valuable information there as well. To help you. And yeah. if they're your friend on Facebook, they can easily just click on uh, the thing, become your friend and send you a little private message. Uh, so uh, I think that's our show for today. Am I yeah. right? Yeah. Is, that, is there any other final thoughts you have, Mr. Felipe, before we leave this show, actually? Yeah, it's never too late uh, to get your plan in order. Well, I guess it could be too late, but uh, you know, at least uh, you know, have that conversation with your, your loved ones and, and get things set up for yourselves today so that uh, in case tomorrow doesn't come for you. Your if you are having a heart attack right now, dial 911 and have <laughs> your next of kin dial the phone numbers. Just rewind the tape and listen to Jim's phone numbers. Because yeah. uh, we talked about when is the time to call. It's as soon as this show is over. And yeah. what's the name of the show? The and Power you know, of Jim. Yeah, but, you know, we got to exit this properly here. This is a good thing. A third time, Philly. But in all sincerity, uh, philippilaw.com. You can see that in the text here. And so this is the denouement. This is the apogee uh, of the whole show. Because this is Jim Keechon, the walk star, along with... Jim Meyer from Remax Gold, along with Jim Filippi with the Filippi Law Firm. And you are tuned in to The, the Power, Power of Jim. Filippi <laughs> Law, make sure you take care of those kids, right? So they can take care of you. <laughs> so give it a you guys. It's been you. an honor to be a part of your show. Great. Now, we're ending the show now. Now, uh, we're on social media. We'd like to hear your thoughts. You know, like it. You can comment on it. It's really important, truly, to just take action. And, you know, um, in all sincerity, um, you know, there's a lot of things that are happening right now with COVID-19. The, the, you know, can we walk into the restaurant and eat? Can we not walk into the restaurant and eat? Uh, but everywhere we go, we see people with masks. Make sure you're kind to everyone. You don't know what they're going through. And, you know, there are some situations um, that, that are a little bit tough. But what I learned was that I've been going into the grocery store because now they're requiring them to people to wear masks, right? So I walk in and what I realized <clears throat> is if I didn't have my mask, people would give me a mask. I'd find somebody to give me a mask. So I've been able to look at an experiment with different types of masks. So there you have it, a good way to uh, just explore, just see what kind of masks out there. There are different qualities of masks. There's a real thin type. There are some that actually have really nice fabric, right? So anyway, those are things to think about. So in this economy, you want to go ahead and uh, think about just how you can do to add a little levity, uh, smile, be kind to people. I'm sure you do that all the time, uh, Mr. Felipe and Mr. Myers. Well, maybe. Mr. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to guess that we're going to have this COVID problem up until the first Tuesday in November. And then the minute the election happens, all of a sudden, everybody's going to say, ah, you really never needed to wear a mask. And it really wasn't that bad. Obviously, uh, there are people dying. There are people hurting. Uh, but the big question would be, did we have to shut down the economy? I don't know. I'm just asking. Yeah. Or we're going to have some, some interesting question. talks okay. about this, the whole con economy. So uh, you're going to want to check out Monday's show as well. Uh, we have a special guest here that we're going to be uh, doing a rough cut as well, right? G-Man, uh, the guy that invented hip-hop, uh, he's doing a new cooking show. He used to cook for the Jackson family. Yes, Ooh, very Matt Jackson. I'm not talking talking about Andrew Jackson. I'm talking about Michael Jackson's family. Okay. Uh, that's our show for today. And so, we're going to see you guys very, very great, soon. Great. And you know what the cool thing is? You always come back on Facebook if you want to see this again. So Yeah. Yeah. yeah All I right. watch myself. <laughs> well, anyway, this is the, the, the Asian and the two Caucasians, right? All lives matter. Bye-bye. Power of Jim is a pretty big deal. Except we